became known as the two-headed quarterback, and their legend is as much a part of Florida State's football rise as Bobby Bowden's trick plays. Road wins at Nebraska. And Chief Osceola and Renegade. Upon their arrival on campus, FSU was thought by most to still be an all-girls school, the sort of team that would be an excellent sacrificial lamb in between crucial conference games. However, from 1977 to 79, Jimmy Jordan and Wally Woodham were part of a strategic development so successful, it basically put Florida State on the football map. Wally Woodham uh, is one of the most accurate passers we've had at Florida State and uh, one of the best leaders we've had at Florida State. He had ultimate confidence in his ability. Jimmy was, he was a hardball pitcher. He could throw the ball by you. He, he, you, give him a, you give him a foot opening on a receiver, he put it right there. Both men were homegrown legends from Tallahassee Leon High School. And that's where their unusual relationship began. We liked to hunt, and we and we did some other things together. I guess get out on the town at night a little bit, but we we liked to do things like that. We were good friends and knew a lot about each other's families and all that. And it, it was almost like a a brother type thing. Both took the field in Seminole Country as sophomores in 1977, the second year of the Bobby Bowden era. From their first game that season at Southern Mississippi, where Jordan started and Woodham finished, their careers would be distinctly parallel. Over the next three seasons, Bowden alternated the two like a gunfighter switching pistols. Whichever quarterback had the hottest hand at the time would start, the other would relieve. When one got in trouble or couldn't find the mark, the other was there for the rescue. It was nearly like baseball is played today, where you have a starter, and you have a, a middle round guy, and you have a finisher. One of them would get on a roll and, le and start for maybe four games in a row. Then the other one would get on a roll, and he'd start for three games in a row. Wally started and threw a touchdown right off the bat. And then he had a couple bad drives and he was gone. And I ended up making a few things happen here or there and we ended up blowing them out. In 1979, the Seminoles went undefeated for the first time in major college football. Of course, without the heroics of the two-headed QB, it wouldn't have been possible. The relationship, I don't think it happened again. It was just a perfect situation as far as uh, personalities. That 79 season, what I remember most from it was we continued to build what they have now. The success of the two-headed quarterback would not have happened if the timing wasn't right. Two great friends and competitors rose together for the benefit of one team.